Let's wrap up everything I read in July. Honestly, July was a little bit of a slower month for me. I took some time to slow down and read some longer books and the majority of which were the War of Lost Hearts trilogy, which I already have my reading vlog for that up. Go check it out. I love that series and I love vlogging my experience of reading one of my new favorite fantasy romance series. So please, please watch that if you are interested. But in the meantime, this might be a little bit shorter than I'm used to for wrap ups because I didn't read as much, but that's okay because we're just taking our time and appreciating books for what they are. Some months you read more, some months you read less, and that's okay. The first book I have to talk about this month is A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. This was literally on my TBR like five times because the release date kept getting pushed. But Claire Legrand wrote the Furyborn trilogy, which is one of my all-time favorite trilogies. And I was so, so excited that she's coming out with a new series and it lived up to the hype. For me personally, I know that I really like connect with her work, but I also know that her work is not for everyone but I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> so this is basically like a Bridgerton-esque Regency world but with magic. So we're following Lady Gemma and she is from this noble family and in her noble family they are known as anointed so they have like powers from the gods and they're like you know a big deal. However she's the only one in her family that actually gets sick when she is exposed to magic and so it, it's hard for her to live a life like constantly in pain because everyone around her uses magic. She craves love and just wants to belong and she's just kind of really lonely in her life. Then we have Talon who is a mysterious man that comes to stay at her family's estate and he basically tells Gemma that her family's feud with this other family of prominence in their kingdom is due to a blood debt to a demon and so he makes a deal with her. He will kind of help her track down this demon to end the curse on her family and she will help him integrate into high society so he can get to know the people that he needs to know to kind of climb the rungs and things go from there and get wild the first half of this book is definitely more heavy on the regency and then it just spirals into chaos so i ended up giving this book five stars it was one of my favorites of the year and i like that this is kind of combining like popular romance structure in a fantasy romance world so this first book followed one couple and then the other two books are going to follow the other two sisters which is a really intriguing structure for a story that still has a continuing like fantasy plot line because typically you don't follow different main characters when that happens but that is what's happening in this book and I think it's going to be very intriguing. I loved Gemma and Talon's story like you can obviously tell that these are two very broken people but they found solace in one another and I think what maybe throws people off with this book or will throw people off with this book because I don't know how many people have read it yet is that the first half and the second half are very different. The second half kind of like really goes from this like Regency setting into this journey of like wild magic, chaos, and kind of really veers towards like the horror and like the grotesque kind of genre. So it's more like gothic horror fantasy romance which is personally one of my favorite niches in books so I ate this up but I can see people going into this expecting one thing and then kind of getting to the middle and being like wait this is totally different than I thought but if you like twisty gothic horror fantasy you will love this I really feel like Gemma went on such a self-discovery -disco journey and I think it was also a really well done representation of chronic pain in a fantasy setting because like magic which she's surrounded with ca causes her pain and so she's constantly in pain and she is like, like they really don't know what happened to her and they don't know how to fix it and so it's really like a parallel to the modern day world of like you have some sort of chronic disease with chronic pain and there's like no treatment and I just thought that her character was done really well. She also has anxiety and panic attacks connected to this chronic pain and I thought that representation was also done really well and then Talon was just kind of like an intriguing character and I just love the way that they like played off of one another and I love their romance and there were so many twists and turns and this was honestly a page turner and I adored my time reading it. I also did like alternating colored tabs just to like match the aesthetic of the book which is kind of what I've been doing a lot more lately when reading my books and I just enjoy the way that it looks. So yeah, five stars. The next book that I read is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren and I read this book on audio while I was 
in the car on a journey so i kind of read it in one like big stretch which usually with audiobooks i break it up a lot but it was fun to just like have an audiobook on and listen to it the whole trip i thought that was so cool lily wilder grew up the daughter of a famous treasure hunter duke wilder and basically when she is about 19 she has her first love with the city boy that comes to their ranch leo but then something separates them and they never see each other again and lily is left heartbroken now it's many years later and lily's father has died and she's really just trying to make ends meet so she runs an adventure tourism company where her and her friends like take all these people out on trails and they do kind of like survival and like puzzle games and whatnot so unknowingly leo's friend books them on that trip and they reconnect and they basically have to go on the treasure hunt of a lifetime and things just take a turn that i was not expecting it got much more adventure and suspense heavy than i thought it would the stakes were very high and their romance was really sweet i loved the way that they like reconnected and kind of like healed old wounds but i think what really took the cake for me in this book was the adventure aspect it was so cool there was a journey there was a map there was like clues and treasure hunts and these like canyons and I was just really immersed in like the wild wild west aspect of this book. Cowboy romances are more popular now. This is like cowboy adjacent I would say because it's like adventures with horses. She's more like a cowgirl than he is a cowboy but honestly if you're in your cowboy romance era could be worth checking out. I ended up giving this book four stars. Next was the first book in the War of Lost Hearts trilogy daughter of no worlds this is really the setup for the series we follow tasana who has been sold into slavery and she's a slave her whole life she finally escapes and she goes to the small country known as ara to hopefully find help with what is known as the orders which are these magic users and she is also a magic user and she wants to be trained there um, in order to use their army to free all of the slaves in her nation but when she gets there um they kind of don't know what to do with her and so they kind of, they give her to this guy max who is this recluse he really wants to be like retired from the order orders and doesn't want anything to do with them but they make him train her and he like really doesn't want to do anything with her and teaching her and things just spiral from there this book got crazy this trilogy was insane so detailed i'm giving this book five stars I love the relationship between Dasana and Max. I will say that this book, while fantasy romance, is probably more heavier on the fantasy than the romance. Um, I would almost like consider this like an epic adult high fantasy with some spice, but the fantasy plots were just so immersive and insane and Max and Dasana's relationship was so cute. Max is a little bit different than our typical fantasy romance hero. He is kind of like just like a grumpy hermit and love that for him um but they're i don't know they just have like this relationship built on such mutual trust and understanding and like he's like whatever you want to do like i will help you and he she you know brings him out of his shell and he kind of like grounds her because she's she's gone her whole life without love so i just love these characters this world it you know the, the seeds were planted here but it just like really got insane throughout the whole series so obviously five stars and again check out my reading vlog if you want to know more about my thoughts as I was reading after that I listened to the audiobook for the summer I turned pretty by Jenny Han I just I just wanted to know what all the hype was about this book is now a popular Amazon Prime series but we follow Belly aka Isabella and she goes to Cousins Beach every summer with her family and her family friends and she's kind of torn between these two brothers and I ended up getting this book like two or three stars like i wanted to read it to know what was going on and i will probably watch the show because i love some trash tv but i did not like any of the characters and this book is definitely dated for way back in the day ya when it was written but you know what i'm part of the cool crowd that knows what's going on now after that i listened to the audiobook for blood promise by rochelle mead and this is the fourth book in the vampire academy series <laughs> And this is a old YA book. I think the first book came out in 2007. Old YA series that I have been making my way through for pretty much the whole year. And book four starts the second half of the trilogy. In this world, we have the Maroi, who are like mortal vampires and they're all good and they don't do anything evil. And then we have the Dampir, who are half vampire, half human, and they protect the Maroi, and that's kind of their whole society. 
So in this book we see Rose, our Dampier main character, go on a journey to Siberia and like I was just so into this book the whole time I was reading. Like honestly what a world, what a journey. This series kind of gave me like just the, such nostalgic feeling for like what books in 2007 were like and I really wish I had read the series as a kid and then I'll be giving this one five stars. Next after that I finished Children of Fallen Gods. I don't know if you can tell but she is chunky. So wow. This one introduced a third POV and I had no idea how it all connected until the end and it was just so brilliantly executed. The world was just expanded so 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 much and also introducing a third POV that is seemingly not connected can be a very risky choice because then people like might prefer one storyline over the other but Chris of Broadbent just like made me so intrigued. I was equally invested in both. Again, I have a whole reading vlog about it but five stars. And the last book for the month, I know it was a really short reading month for me, is Spirit Bound by Rochelle Mead, which is the fifth book in the Vampire Academy series. And this is the book where things went down and they were crazy and insane. And I was like, oh my god, what's going on with this series? It was just insane. Loved every second. Five stars. All right, guys, that is all that I read in July. A little bit of a quicker wrap up this month, but it's all good. Spent some time reading some chunky fantasy books and otherwise read a lot of audiobooks have potentially a new favorite book and it was a chill month loved it love talking about these books so have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one